The Joshua Generation is a Christian missionary organization based in Nairobi, Kenya. We seek to aid the born-again believer to see, enter, possess, and maintain their land of promise. This is their place of purpose, walking in their full potential and inheritance in Christ Jesus. This is done with the aim of raising mature priests, sons, and kings who will establish God's kingdom on earth. Through this message, you will be empowered with kingdom principles that will usher you into your land of promise. I'm sure as we proceed, Mr. Irongo, you have some uh, questions. There are more questions that are coming from the audience. Can I just say something just before we, we, we go to the question? All right, just a question um, before that. Um, I'm, I'm sure because the question will take us somewhere else, I'm sure of that. Let me say that um, in the same way we've um, said that the greatest example of a father or the, the pattern of fatherhood should first and foremost come from God the Father, so should the pattern of sonship. The pattern of sonship should also come from mm-hmm. God the Son. Yes. Yes. Because the Bible tells us in the book of Philippians chapter 2 that mm-hmm. while Jesus Christ mm-hmm. uh, knew that he was, it was not robbery, mm-hmm. for him to be equated with God, mm-hmm. that is the Godhead, yes. the Elohim, mm-hmm. that he still humbled himself mm-hmm. to the point of death. And then the Bible tells us that then God raised him yes. to the highest place. Yes. So we are because saying that, that we still have patterns mm-hmm. also for sons. We can look and keep saying, yeah, but you fathers, you need to have pattern. You need to look at God the Father as the pattern. Well, but sir, you sons, sure. you also need to look at well, God the Son as the highest pattern of sonship. He said, I do what I see my father do. I speak what I hear my father speak. And that's, that's why one the, of the father battles. was pleased in the son. Yes. Maybe just to add on that shortly. Um, just thinking about it, sons should also not be insecure about being a son. It's mm-hmm. not a lower uh, <laughs> position that you've been given. Yeah, that's a Remembering that you are a kingdom father to be able to reproduce. Yes. The fact that I'm not reproducing at this hour. So hold on. You are saying that sometimes there's not only insecurity with fathers about sons, but sometimes there is insecurity with sons about fathers. They feel, oh, the father is not allowing me to bring up the The father is not allowing me. Remember the story of the prodigal son? The father says, all these things are yours. But he says, no, 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 no. Give me my inheritance. I've gone. He was insecure. He was very insecure about Mm -hmm. himself. Now the problem is not even the prodigal son. The problem is the brother of the prodigal son. Because when the prodigal son came back, the Bible says he came to his senses and came back. And the brother of the prodigal son says, and what about me? You're having a party for my brother. What about me? And he's saying, you've never even given me anything in this place. And the father just responds and says, but all this time, these things have always been your insecurity. And even just looking at whether it's biological, uh, spiritual, and all that, look biological. Even in our current society right now, we are trying to outdo our biological uh, parents. You want to build that house that your parents never gave you. Not that you will live in a seven-bedroomed house, the truth be told. You will grow old and you know, move on with life. But just to show them that, look, the house you didn't give to me, I am now living in it. You want to show them that the cars that you never drove me in, let me show you how I will drive five cars at the same time, which you cannot. So the insecurity also with the sons is something that needs to be addressed. Because if you can deal with the identity of the son, then we remove this whole aspect of competition. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, the Joshua Generation Trust invites you and your spouse to the annual Fivefold Ministers Roundtable and Retreat Conference. Holding from the 10th Wednesday to the 12th Friday of June 2015 at the Great Rift Valley Lodge and Golf Resort, Naivasha, Kenya. The theme is Building Our Father's Kingdom. We will engage in candid, brainstorming, and interactive sessions. Contact Reverend Eric Kibuga on telephone number 0717-298-631. Email a minister's roundtable at jgmail.org. It will be a unique two nights and three days working holiday. Kariboni Sana. I think, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, let's take uh, two questions from Mr. Irongo. Please, just two questions. We'll respond to them as we continue. Questions from, from the floor. 
Uh, can one person be a father in all fields? Does one need to specialize? Can one person be a, f a father in all fields or does one need to specialize? A second one is, does your pastor become an automatic spiritual father? Does your pastor become an automatic spiritual father? And uh, what happens if your father feels insecure with your progress? What happens if your father becomes insecure with your progress? And a comment is that uh, also fathers need to be fathered. All right, thank you. <laughs> so we've just heard a son should not be insecure to be a son. Now we are hearing a father too also needs to be fathered. I think beginning with the first uh, question, um, is it possible for a father to be a father on all levels, biologically, spiritually, uh, socially, governmentally? I don't know what... what Absolutely. What, what this is what we are talking when you talk about the seven professional nations of calling. In God's perfect plan, the spiritual fatherhood should not only be relegated to a pastor. If we had the perfect model yes. going on on mm -hmm. the earth, whereby um, uh, believers then are fathered, uh, let's talk about by, say, pastors, and come to a place of maturity, they too should be all able to also spiritually father. Yes. So that you find yourself, you may be a biological father. For example, let me talk of Mr. Sami here. Mr. Sami here is um, a, a biological father. He has a son and he has a daughter. So he's fathering uh, biological children. But he's also, a, we can say, a, a professional father because he's also a father and in, in Samira ICF consult. He's also a professional father. By the way, as, as you are on that, yes. Mr. Sami Karanja is also a married man. Yes. He's he also, also fathering his wife. Okay, so, so he's, yes. he's, he's also fathering his wife. Yes, yes, yes he's also, also fathering his wife because me as a wife, I've also seen the benefits of being fathered myself. So that answers the father should also be fathered. Okay, so um, um, Pastor, uh, Mr. Sami Karanja is also a spiritual father in the sense that he's also a leader mm -hmm. in his ICF, um, yes. in area his of uh, area of calling. Mm. He's also raising people. Mm. And in raising them, he's not just raising them to know how to do this and that in that professional he's area, but he's bodies. using the principles of the kingdom yes. of God. And as such, then he becomes a spiritual father. And Yet within... He's called into government. Yes, within his area of calling. If he's called into government. Now we're talking about the, the perfect model of a father. The, in the perfect model of a father, we should see the spiritual, the professional, the biological, if that is the will of that going on together. Um, and let me say that a lot of people are hurting, even many of you seated here, because those three areas were never exhibited in your lives mm. by even your biological father. Mm. So that you find that your biological father could have paid your school fees, could have provided, you know, brought you up, could have even protected you, but could not father spiritually. And there was a deformation there. Yes. Could not even raise you professionally in even advising you. Not even that you were to work under him. Even just the initial advice of purpose could not do that. And you find that many of you may be going uh, uh, through that as well. So what we want to say, even including the viewers, those of you that are even watching this particular video, and even those that are also here, you find that those could be deformations in your life. But there is hope, even as we continue discussing, I'm sure you'll, you'll get an, a lot of nuggets that we, it will even help you. In and maybe even, uh, as, as, uh, I would like to hear uh, Pastor Luvembe's comment on the whole issue of does your spiritual, does your pastor necessarily become your automatic uh, spiritual father? Okay. There are, there are dynamics that I'm going to look at when I'm answering this question. Now, the, the first dynamic is this. The, the pastor you are immediately submitted to, committed to, that becomes your spiritual father. Because essentially he's the shepherd watching over you, giving you what? Covering. So that becomes your spiritual father. Remember, it's a delegated authority. It's a delegated what? Authority. Now, there are dynamics. You can find maybe uh, you are, say, you are in one community and maybe you are visiting Eldoret. Then when you're visiting Eldoret, uh, you find yourself maybe 
it was a day when you have a forum on the other side. And that's a Sunday. And so you visit me. Now, when you come into the community I'm pastoring at that point in time, you have come to a fatherhood. It may not be directly your fatherhood, but there is a fatherhood of that house. At that particular point in time, for just that moment, that's a fatherhood temporarily that has given you the cover. But you have your fatherhood that you're committed to. Yep. I think one of the reasons why sometimes this confuses many people, two, two reasons come to my mind. Uh, firstly, um, you know, there is, sometimes there is um, this notion where people just go to church, you locate your church just without a sense of purpose mm. or bearing. Mm. Sometimes you go to church, maybe it's just the particular church you are raised in traditionally. Mm. And you are told our whole family, we all used to go to this church, so you too end up going to that church. Not because of the, func the true function of a church mm. in your life yes. or yes. purpose that God took you there. So what happens is you end up going to that church not really by revelation. And so sometimes you wonder, okay, do I really fit here? Does the fatherhood here and the covering that I see here, is it really one that is speaking to my life and leading me where I'm going? And secondly, maybe we can also hear comments on this, is where you go to a, a, a community, maybe a church community, there is a leader there, spiritual father, but maybe he, as a Reverend Esther had mentioned, was not fathered himself. Mm. So if I wasn't fathered, how do I know how to lead you? The only way I know is this is how I was taught. The way of the streets. E.g., maybe as a biological father, I give an example, not necessarily my own. Maybe as a biological father, how I saw fatherhood being done is as long as I pay for the fees and I pay the rent, the rest you sort yourself out. So apply that within the context now of a local church where to me maybe as a pastor, my definition of playing my fatherhood role is I preach on Sunday. So what more do you need? Sort then yourself. you end up being a member there. Mm. God help you. Okay. You preach, want, uh, you sort yourself. I also want to touch on another What thing. he saw his father do. I want to touch on another dynamic that I left out, um, even as Pastor Eric was talking about. You cannot be fathered by somebody on TV. T.D. Jakes cannot be your father. <laughs> you see, as yes, in, it's, in as much as, as, much as you as love him, of God, yes. in as love much him. as you love his preaching, you see, Malachi said, I will link up the heart mm. of the father to the child or the son, yes. and the heart of the child, to the, a father must know you. You can't, right now, if, if you can't tell me T.D. Jakes is pastoring you or is fathering you and you fly to Dallas and you arrive there and you ask, who are you? You say, you are my father, how? <laughs> I've been watching you. <laughs> so, so, yes, from, which mother, yes. from which yeah. mother? They are, they are, you are there my must father, be tangi TV. tangibility of the on relationship. On TV, on TV. You must be known. Yes. There must be tangibility yes. of the relationship. Because Account, the, and accountability. Yeah, because, because the thing is, how do you do the two-way thing yeah. yes. on TV? You can see T.D. Jakes, but he can't see you smoking yeah. bangi <laughs> as you are watching TV. So how would he correct you? Are you understand what and, I'm saying? Yeah. And to add to that, sir, in fatherhood, there are obligations. Mm, yes. There are obligations. So both the father and the son must be consciously aware yeah. that there is... There is an obligations in it. And that's why I normally tell people, just like you just don't marry anybody because they are born again, the same way you don't just go to any church just because they are preaching Jesus. You must look as Pastor Ruven was saying, because these things Reverend Ni was bringing out concerning you as an individual, the five areas, and maybe other others. This person, maybe another area, Pastor Ni did not mention, but it might be a, a subtopic within those ones. Also remember, a father circumcises. Mm. So this person... Removing the flesh. Uh, removing it's the, uh, uh, of, it's uh, part uh, of nurturing. Exactly. Because it's removing the flesh, uh, the carnality in the person. Yes. Correcting, weeding, grooming. Mm -hmm. yes. So this person, can you imagine you need to be circumcised, but you are going to this person who yet to be circumcised. Does he know how to circumcise himself? He's not Sorry, as you are speaking, we need to make it clear. This is typological. <laughs> yes. in, in, the, in the Old Testament. <laughs> no, we, are the Old Testament. we are talking no. spiritually. In the Old Testament, yes. oh. uh, boys were circumcised by their fathers. Yes. That's why Paul 
took Timothy and circumcised yes. him because Timothy's father was a, a Greek. Greek mother. So he didn't know mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Paul was doing it because he was going to go also to the Jews sometimes. I wanted them to accept Timothy. So he circumcised. So fathers circumcised sons. So spiritually, when we use that, a father is supposed to carry out the spiritual yes. circumcision yes. of the mind, the, of nurturing, which is nurturing, grooming, pruning. And this we are talking, please, we are not talking in the flesh. We are talking about, this is all it's, it's spiritual. Don't take the other side. No, you go being offended. No, we are talking about spiritual thing. And therefore you find this person I am submitting to, is he in a place, because remember, before this father gives you an inheritance, he needs to circumcise you. So, is, is he able, or is he able, is he in, in that, does he have the, all that it takes to circumcise you? And secondly, is this person in a, does he have the ability to give you an inheritance? It's very important. In other words, to make you become better, to enter into your area of calling without him being intimidated and insecure. And, and so, that, mm -hmm. sorry, continue. So that is very, very important. Lest you go to somebody, you think you're submitting to them in order for them to give you an inheritance, but he's a man with a javelin. Like Saul. <laughs> like Saul. And okay. by, the way, by the way, something you say about circumcision. By the way, to circumcise, the person being circumcised cannot be circumcising with his clothes on. Yes. That's typological, not to say walk about naked. We are saying open. you need to open. be open. open. Yes. Yes. If you have a father, you need to be open to the father. If not, he cannot prune, purge, yes. and nurture you. I want to ask you something based on that. You, you made a comment in the meeting we were in some time ago. There was a minister's uh, meeting hosted by the Joshua generation, and uh, Pastor Mburu made a comment. I wanted to ask him a question about it. You know, we were, we were talking about why do we have a vacuum of fatherhood in Kenya? It's, it's a major place of vacuum. You know, if you watch many politicians, many politicians, maybe out of what we said about competition between fathers, many politicians don't have another politician they are grooming. If you watch in business, many or business... Or another politician who raised them. Yes. They don't have another politician professionally grooming the next generation. In fact, you find the same even in a business. Many businesses who don't have... I'm not saying it's not there. It's there. Some people are doing it. But it's rare. Same in the church. And then we were saying, why do we have this problem? We know it's worldwide, but when we sit in Kenya as a geographical location, why, why do we have this vacuum? Where did it start from? Because our forefathers nurtured their children from home. And then you brought up something about the time of independence, the fight for independence, where many fathers went to the bush and were absent. And they were not there to nurture the generation we now call fathers the 60 year olds and above. Many of them grew up without their fathers because their fathers were in the bush fighting or locked up in camps. And so they grew up, like the model we are saying, they did not see what I see my father do. They did not see fathers. They did not see an example of fathering because the father was locked up somewhere or in the bush. And so he grew up not knowing how to father, but had got married, has children, and doesn't know how to father them. And these are the people who fathered most of us here. Maybe you want to comment on it. That, that's very true. You find during the time for fighting for independence, you find men, African men in Kenya, went into the bush to fight. And those who, again, who are not fighting because of what they used to call people were taken from their places, we find mo most people you find, like men, wherever they're working with the, within urban areas, the, the families used to be in up country. Mm. So they were absentee fathers. And so these children, they grow without a father, an absentee father. And at times, actually, there's some age you go into some families, you'll discover that all those children, though they are siblings, they are not shared from the same father. Because this man went and may, may even stayed 10 years. Are you getting this kind of a thing? And so one day you go somewhere, so another yeah, part so of another, Kenya, you yeah. see somebody that looks just like you. Yes. So you find, in fact, somebody told, ask me if I, I am like somebody else when we are greeting, <laughs> I said, we greet one another. So you find because of that, there is, they came a crisis. Are you getting me? And then because there was no fatherhood and there was no order and governmental again, and again in our fight for independence, so it there's was... a generational gap of fathering. There's a generational gap. lost some skills uh -huh. of fathering. The that. generational gap. And then to add into that, again, we were fighting for independence, to be independent. So again, independent syndrome. So you find, even this person again, 
He wants to be dependent. He doesn't want, you know, fatherhood demands you, you become obligated. You become, you ask questions. As you, as you say, the circumcision, you have to be naked in everything. You have to answer even hard questions. Accountability. Accountability. So you don't want accountability. And that's why you hear this talk. I'm a self-made man. Mm. So nobody made you. That's I'm right. a self-made man. So you find, because of those many gaps, it brought a generation of people that were not fathered. And you'll find it in the church. Yeah, in the, and these same people have become fathers in the church, in government, yes. in yes. industry, and also spiritually. I mean, all areas, biologically. All areas. But they did not... They were not fathered. And because of that again, sir, you find because they don't understand fatherhood, they don't know when to let go. Even politically. Somebody still old, they are dying their hair to continue. Let's be honest. Nowadays, you don't see old people, politicians, they dye their hair. They don't know when to let go. Same with, 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 the, with the church. But, they are perpetual like me. Uh -huh. But look at a good example I like using in the Bible. We all remember David. The Bible says that David was a mighty man of valor, and we know how many giants he slayed. But at times came when he had raised men like Cardino and others, generals. He was in Cave Adulam as a captain of the people who had all these kind of problems, but later he became, he became the king and he was surrounded by these big men. But at one time, David thought he's still the same, same young, vibrant man who can go for war, and he wanted to go for war. But his generals told him, "Ah, uh ah, -uh, you are the light of Israel. You stay in the city, govern but the they people." They almost killed him in war. He was That's almost right. killed in the war. They said, "No, this will be a taboo. It, 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 it will be a curse. You stay in the city, father us, and we, your sons, we are we are there. We can fight." Arrows in the hand of him. Uh -huh. So we should understand that even in the fatherhood, the time to let go, you let the, the these people go and fight and. In the morning, I was looking at this, the, the, the one you are, I was just responding to my wife and saying, Reverend is just using some of the scriptures you are typing, my wife was typing for me. You find in Psalms 127, the, but now the last chapter, it says that this, first of all, it says that children are an heritage from the Lord. Blessed is a man whose quiver is full of them. Yes. Then it goes and says that at the gates... They are like the arrows in the hand of they are like arrows in the hand they of will contend man. with the enemies in the, in the enemies place. then i went ahead i wanted to to look at the explanation from the hebrew and everything commentary and all these things they were saying those olden days at the gate it's whereby there was governance and and if people have got they, they wanted there were some cases they want to 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 settle and everything or what they go, went there but now they are saying now this father the reason why the sons are doing that, it's because he's not barren or impotent. Now he can sit down and get defended. Now it's not him who is talking. It's the children who now are talking, the sons. They have grown on behalf of the father. He also says they go to the future. You fire an arrow ahead of you. Yeah. Children, we're also going to the uh -huh. future to speak. Exactly. So we need to understand that. Excellent. Can I add just one more dynamic? Uh, unfortunately, um, the area? unfortunately yes. Reverend Esther. <laughs> Yes. We are short on oh. time. What, what, what I'd like to request is maybe if we can make our final comments like a parting shot. Yeah. Uh, I, I think maybe just a minute each, if we could just make our parting shots because there's so much to say, but we are not able to exhaust it. Maybe do we start this way, Reverend Susan, going up? All right, thank you. Just to say this, Jesus says to the disciples, he says, come, I will make you fishers of men. You know, the term making, uh, which requires processing. And just both on both ends, the father needs to be processed so that he can be able to process others. And the son himself needs to cooperate with the process. So whether you see yourself as a son currently, whether you're seeing yourself as a father, just allowing the place of process. Let me be able to imbibe every function that God the father has so that I may be able to reproduce like him. I'll say that this, this topic is quite wide and I know the time is short. This is something maybe for a whole week forum we can talk because there are a lot of things to be handled. But let me say especially to the audience and by God's grace I see many people are still in, the, in their youthful years whereby there's much ahead that you are most fortunate to hear these kind of things. I wish when I was growing there was this kind of, a, of, of truths that were taught and men that were ready to father because I believe though God restores what has been eaten by the enemy, if it was there, we could have gone far more than where we are today. And I have done as a, as a, as a student of Bible and history, let me say this, I've 
done a lot of research and have come to this conclusion that the reason why our country is behind in many things. In fact, when I was this panelist, when we were talking out there, we are seeing the problem because of lack of fatherhood. And the reason why, because there are so many problems in our nation is because of lack of fatherhood. Whereby fathers don't know how to father or they don't want the responsibility of fathering. At the same time, sons don't want to be fathered and they want to be independent. And because of that, you find many people end up being average. A lot of potential is not brought to its fullness. Yes, they and don't grow up uh, to their fullest and becoming... You see, I was looking at this, about Abraham, I'll Isaac... I'll have to cut you short, yes. Buru, because just because of time. <laughs> Thank but you. we are talking about the relationship between fathers and sons, so that the full potential is maximized. Mr. Sami, both to the audience here and those who are watching us. Yes, uh, thank you, sir. Many times we underestimate the impact that fatherhood plays in our lives, either by having an absent father or having a present father who is fully functioning. And many times we do not understand that some of the things that we go through is because of those two things, fathers who are present or fathers who are absent. I would like each and every one of us, the audience uh, and the people who are going to uh, are listening to us, that it is very important to interrogate yourself and to see where your father missed what they missed and to identify a father who is going to father you and close that gap. Another thing I would like to say to the young people and also to the people who are supposed to be fathered who are sons, the father can only release a blessing to you when you honor them. So many times as sons, they have very big head, they can't submit to their fathers and yet their fathers cannot be able to give them or, yeah, the blessing and the inheritance. So sons, Submit yourself to the fathers, and you submit yourself to the fathers as, uh, as Jacob uh, was blessed. When you submit yourself to the fathers and you honor them, definitely you are going to be empowered to become a future father. Thank you. I want to beseech the entire body of Christ. A truth you have not embraced is a truth you'll never enjoy. Let us embrace fatherhood. He says, when the hearts of the fathers turn to the sons, the hearts of the sons to the fathers, the whole environment will enjoy one of the most awesome environment that is free from curses. Let us embrace fatherhood. Um, just uh, actually, Pastor Luvembe just stole my line. So <laughs> I have to look for another line. But let me say that, I didn't even open, open the scripture, Malachi chapter 4, 6. Let me say that um, it's, it's so critical. Don't blame yourself and say, um, I have no father to look up to. Um, or my father is deformed, how will I, you know, look at the deformed father? In as much as we are over here, and by the grace of God, endeavoring to, to, to try to um, employ on the body of Christ in this nation to embrace um, a new type of fatherhood, we are also doing in the same way, um, employing to the body of Christ to, to em uh, employ a new type of sonship. So don't be limited by a deformed father. If all fathers around you fail, there is still God the Father. If every other thing fails, you don't have an excuse to say, I will just be a bad son. That's it. I will never ever be a good son and I will just be a, a disobedient son and it's the fault of all my fathers. I'm like this because of all my fathers. No. You can change the narrative. You can change the narrative Look to God the Father. Let me, let me add something there, you know. I just want to appreciate our panel. I know you do that. But as we are standing here, I'm hearing God. Mm -hmm. And um, by his angels speaking to me and telling me, you know, things may have gone wrong in fatherhood and sonship. But let all fathers learn to be fathers. Let sons learn to be both sons and future fathers. And I hear God say, you can allow God so that Malachi 4, and Luke 1, 16 to 17, can be fulfilled in your own generation. The spirit of God is moving now in the body of Christ and in the nations to correct it, according to Malachi and Luke. The spirit of God is moving. That's why he's turning the heart of fathers to sons and sons of fathers. He's repairing that damage. He's rebuilding that function of covering 
and fatherhood. So we can cooperate with him and we can become the generation in whom that scripture will be fulfilled. And fatherhood will once again be used to bring the kingdom of God on the earth and bring men to their fullness of purpose and potential in Christ. Excellent. I think with that, we want to appreciate all the panelists for your wonderful contributions that you're able to make. We really appreciate it. Why don't we put our hands together for them? Just appreciate them as we release them back to their seats. Thank you very much. The Lord bless you. Wonderful contributions. We don't take them for granted. Thank you so much. We appreciate. Everyone is called to represent Christ in one or more of the seven professional areas of calling. In business, sports, government, arts and media, family, science and education, clergy and healthcare. Me serving God in that area is what I was born and what I was sent on earth to do. Every believer needs to be equipped and trained in order to successfully discover and carry out this God-given mandate. I realized I can serve God at my workplace. That's my marketplace. Every single time I did what the Holy Spirit told me to, I was able to win those matches. The source of every profession is God. The Kingdom Academy is uniquely tailored to equip Christian professionals. Registration is ongoing for the two years evening class course. For more information or registration, contact us on telephone number 0717 or email address kingdomacademy at jgmail.org We also want to appreciate you for all your wonderful questions, your contributions. Um, we really have tried, this is a really broad subject. We've tried to see how much can we cover, but without you, we wouldn't have, you know, uh, you know, we wouldn't have looked at this topic from so many angles. So why don't you put your hands together for yourself, the person seated next to you. A round of applause for your wonderful contributions. We don't take them for granted. Thank you, thank you so very much. Well, I'd like us to take at least uh, a prayer in line with what we have discussed. The goal behind this forum was not to bring anyone into condemnation. Have you been a good father? Have you been a terrible son? Have you been a wicked father? Have you been? No. The goal was not to bring any into condemnation. Not even you are the pastor of the local church you are in, or uh, you know, civic fathers, or you know, societal fathers. The goal was not to point fingers, but the goal was the back must stop somewhere. And you and I must take responsibility. The theme for today's forum was the need for kingdom fathers. So you and I must take responsibility to say, excuse me, it may not have been perfect or it may have been perfect, but you and I can make a difference. We can relate with God on a different way. We can change our paradigm, our perspective on this topic of fatherhood and we can become the right fathers biologically, the right fathers spiritually, the right fathers socially, the right fathers professionally. Wherever it is that we are, you and I can become the right fathers. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I want us to take a prayer based on uh, that scripture that was quoted here quite a bit in Malachi. If we could have it on the slides, uh, on the screen rather. Malachi chapter 4 and verse number 5 and 6. We are going to pray on the basis of this prayer. We want to pray an effective prayer that is based on the word of God. And so if we look at Malachi chapter 4 and verse number 5 and 6, this is what it says. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and the dreadful day of the Lord. Verse 6, And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. And this scripture has been mentioned here and you know looking at it and how it says I will send you Elijah the prophet and it's not really talking about Elijah the person but he's talking about a manifestation of the spirit of God and you know one of the assignments of Elijah was to restore order, to restore truth. You remember Elijah saying how long will we keep halting between two? If God is God let it be clear. So Elijah came to restore righteousness came to restore order. And this is what God said, I will send, God talking about sending his spirit, a manifestation of his spirit to enforce and bring back righteousness in how we approach life and do things. 
and it says part of what he shall do in verse 6 he will turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers because this is divinely orchestrated and God says lest I come and smite the earth with a curse and we know that is the earth you know that is the curse of disorder not so much that God is coming to trouble the earth but that the earth will get out of order because there is no covering there is no one playing those roles of fatherhood as we had learned and so may I request us please to stand up on our feet we are going to pray not only for ourselves but for the different you know the body of Christ here in this room we have people from Catholic Church we have people from Methodist Church we have those from mainstream charismatic Pentecostal we are praying for the body of Christ and the nation of Kenya by extension could we just pray God by your spirit turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and turn the hearts of the sons the, the children back to the father so we may see the order of God the righteousness of God the purposes of God the blessings of God overflow and overtake this nation in Jesus name come on let's pray heavenly father come on pray for yourself pray for your local church community pray for the families in Kenya pray for society the government pray for the different areas of profession heavenly father we ask you by your holy spirit who is our teacher who is our guide who is our helper who is our comforter who is our teacher who is our advocate restore turn the hearts of the fathers back to the hearts back to the children turn the hearts of the fathers back to the sons turn the hearts of the fathers back to their children and turn the hearts of the children turn the hearts of the of the sons back to the fathers that we may see your purposes being realized that we may see the potential within us potential within the families in Kenya potential within the church potential within the, the nation potential within the professional nations being realized on earth as it is in heaven oh father we thank you father we thank you if you can pray in the Holy Spirit the Bible says the Spirit of God prays within us and he says he prays in a language the Bible calls it groanings and moanings utterances that cannot be understood by man but are understood by God if you can pray in the Holy Ghost pray in the Holy Ghost let's allow him to help us if you cannot just in your understanding father help us help us labra monos tushte ke devede le kiriando mandal bardo tu nasati dabado labra bokuta holy spirit thank you that you are turning the hearts of men and women in kenya turning the hearts of fathers turning the hearts of fathers turning the hearts of sons you are bringing order labros ke de prabota the hearts of the fathers back to the children that they may catch what your intent is as their original father as the perfect father that they may not be insecure that they may not kill that they may not castrate but that they may indeed bring forth that they may play their role to nurture to sustain that they may play their role to provide to fend for so that these visions within the children and the sons may come to proper fruition may come to proper fulfillment in purpose in potential and inheritance turn their hearts so they may also play their role to protect the sons and not to use their strength against the sons father turn their hearts that they may also provide governance provide leadership so we may see within this nation within the church the body of Christ and within the professional nations we may see a fulfillment of purpose on earth as it is in heaven and turn also the hearts of the children the sons back to their fathers that the sons may not be insecure that the sons may not misinterpret what the intention of the father is from the heart of God that the sons may be aligned that they themselves may honor their fathers they themselves may align and cooperate so that they too can be raised to become kingdom fathers to their different nations of calling to the glory and honor of your name father we thank you because as we have prayed you have heard us and your holy spirit is helping us to make these things a reality for every church represented here do it lord for this nation this county every
every county, all the 47 counties, do it across this nation and across the body of Christ that we may see your kingdom come, your will being done here on earth, in Kenya and in all the other nations as it is in heaven. For this we give you thanks and we give you praise. Come on, let's put up our hands together to the King of Kings. We thank you that you are doing it. We thank you that you are doing it. We thank you. You are doing it and you will yet do it that your name may be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just on a light note, turn to the person next to you and tell them, hello son or hello father. You never know who you are sitting next to. That may be the next father industrially. He may be the next father. He may be a governor, may be a county rep, may be a member of the county assembly. You never know. It may, it may be a pastor sitting next to you, a spiritual father, maybe a biological father. We want to appreciate all of them in Jesus' mighty name. And as Pastor Mburu had shared as he came up here, it is not to mean that we don't have good fathers out there. They are good fathers. Hello? They are good fathers and we're encouraging and championing for those good fathers. Let's continue to align to the most excellent father of all. The Father of all spirits, the Lord God himself. And as we align, we continue providing proper covering biologically, proper covering spiritually, proper covering socially, and also proper covering professionally. We just are going to sing just one song, as I'm going to be calling on Reverend Susan Kibuga. But we're going to sing one song to Nasema Asante very quickly as Reverend Susan comes in Jesus' name. Nasemania sante, asante tu nasemania sante. O tu nasemania sante, asante tu nasemania sante, asante tu nasemania sante, asante tu nasemania sante, asante tu nasemania sante, asante. Asante, oh, tuna sema shukurani, shukurani, oh, oh, tuna sema shukurani, shukurani, oh, tuna sema shukurani, hey, baba, shukurani, ah, tuna sema shukurani, shukurani, oh, yote una yote na shukurani, shukurani, tuna sema shukurani, shukurani, oh, yote ni yote na shukurani, baba. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, our Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, our Lord. For all that you are doing, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. For all that you are doing, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Oh, do not say my shukurani. Shukurani, do not say my shukurani. Shukurani. Hallelujah. Let's give a round of applause to God. Thank you for being Father, for everything that is working in our lives. We can do better than that. Let's give a round of applause to God. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed? Have you been edified? Have you gotten more insight? Have you gotten more foresight? Are you going to do something with what you've had? You will. Amen and amen. We keep advancing towards what God has called us to be and everything that he's called us to do in our lifetime want to maximize it to the very best. Amen and amen. I just want to take a few couple of announcements as we come to the close. Reverend Esther will actually close for us. And there are many things that have been shared this afternoon. And I believe they have been things that have been inspiring, things that have blessed you. But probably there are certain issues that you just want to get more grounded, a little more insight. And you're wondering, okay, this was not tackled or could I just be explained for this better? Not to worry, we actually have a series done on the need for fatherhood 
that is available for sale. This is about 19 messages that you can be able to get. It's going for only 200 shillings. This is audio messages that have been done or um, saved within a DVD. And you can go and play them and transfer them whether to your laptop or to an MP3 player and just listen to it over and over again. 19 messages just on the need for fatherhood, how to raise kingdom principalities, how to be that son, how to be that father, what is it that it will entail. So I want to encourage you right after this meeting, please pass by the, sorry, the resource desk and you will be able to get those messages. That is not the only message on sale. We've been doing a whole series uh, during these saints and the kingdom. We did um, the believer as a priest. We did the believer as a son. We did the believer as a king. How is it that I'll be raised as a son to be a strong priest, a strong son, and a strong king? Those messages are also available at the resource desk. So in case you want to get a copy for yourself, or you believe that this message will actually benefit someone else, kindly pass through and get a message for yourself. We also have one that has uh, about 89 messages on fulfilling purpose, and probably you've heard about fulfilling purpose, and you're wondering about the seven professional nations. This has about 89 messages only going for 500 Kenya shillings. The truth is, it's not to, you know, come up with costs that people can be able to get, but it's to get the messages as out as possible. Amen? Are we okay with that? Uh, secondly, we also have t-shirts on sale. We have t-shirts on sale that we've introduced. Um, we keep saying this, wear what you are. Don't just wear a t-shirt written, I am here. Or, uh, I've gone. You know, you want to wear a t-shirt that speaks of who you are. So we are having t-shirts with messages, I mean printed messages. We actually have a t-shirt written PSK. You know, the truth is what you wear speaks to other people. And it can be able even to, you know, uh, introduce a conversation or trigger a conversation. So we have a t-shirt written PSK. So when someone asks you what is PSK, you trigger a conversation and you're able to explain. We're talking about being a priest, being a son, being a king. And of course, like we said, there are company messages to go with that. So probably you've purchased the messages and you want to give them to someone to go and listen. What does it entail to be a priest, son, and king? We have another message written, living epistle. We are the church, the body of Christ. We are the example. We are the ones to show the world the way in which things should be done. They're in different colors. There's red, there's black, there's gray there is white so depending on what you feel suits you or you can even get it for a friend uh, I had someone mention today that uh, they have been fathered as a wife husbands you can get it for your wives hallelujah that's part of provision you can get it for a sister you can get it for a brother you can get it for your father whether spiritual biological or even for yourself so even to the children we have the small size that can be able to feed them so 800 shillings after this kindly pass by the resource desk and get for yourself a t-shirt. Are we okay with that? Good. Secondly, I want to make this known to you. As you came in, I want to believe that you got a flyer, a flyer written the Kingdom's Foundation course. Anyone without one, the attendants can get one to you. Can you raise your hand in case you don't have one? We have one person here at the front. Any other person without one? So I believe all of us actually got a copy of this flyer. This flyer it has details to do with a course we are calling Kingdom Foundations course. The truth is many times what you don't know, you can't be able to use. So we want to be able to shed light on different areas to do with Christianity. Whether it's this thing we are calling the Kingdom of God, you want just to know more about the Kingdom of God. Whether it's about the Holy Spirit, you just want to know more about the Holy Spirit. Whether it's about purpose, you want to know more about purpose. So this is a course that is running for five weeks, every Tuesday to Friday, from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. It shall be done in town, uh, Nairobi, that is at the professional center, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock, um, 20 classes. And we are saying this is a good course to ground you. You know, different things that will be shared. It will be a place, you know, a meeting like this, we are not able to raise our hands and maybe interact as we would want to. Now, a course like this gives you a platform to be able to actually ask, I don't understand that, or how will these things be? So, this course grounds you very well. It's not a course just for, you know, in case you got born again and you'd like to attend. It's, for, it's open to every believer. As long as you're born again, this would be a good course for you to attend. So, in case you're interested in this course, uh, right after the meeting, we have someone who 
will be at the registration desk with the registration form. So you can actually register today in case you're interested. There's an m -Pesa there in case you don't have ready cash on you or maybe you have money on your m -Pesa and you'd like to register. Kindly, you can do so. There's a number there you can call. You can also uh, write to us at info at jgmail.org info at jgmail.org and request that you'd like to join this course. Can you get the registration form? Just to remind us, we have our social media platforms. We have our Facebook page. That is the Joshua Generation Trust. We want to encourage you to go there and like that particular page because through that, you're able to interact with us, see the information that is being passed across. There are questions that were not answered as we sat in this place. In this coming week, we'll actually be engaging with it, those questions. We'll post those questions, post the answers towards them. So in case you're not on that particular page, kindly go there, like us, and be able to interact with us. We have our Twitter handle at JG Media Trust. We also have our YouTube channel where you find some of the videos of this meeting and other meetings that are there. So kindly engage with us. Let's be able to interact on the social media platform. Reverend Eric mentioned something. He said this is a gentleman yesterday that posted concerning, you know, fathers that are not playing their roles. And they said by morning they had about uh, 40,000 views. And I think by evening, there were about 89,000 views. Now, what was being posted is not necessarily going to edify anyone. It was just about who has not played their role as a biological father. Now, we have the content, we have the light. Why not engage on those social media platforms and shed as much light as we can? Amen? Amen. Let me take this opportunity and welcome Reverend Esther Muraki. had a wonderful time. What about yourself? Amen. So no more excuses about fatherhood. No more excuses about that my father did not play his role. Has God played his role? Has God played his role? Some of you are not sure whether he has. Yes, he has played his role. That's all you need. Amen. And while um, we are talking about fatherhood, this particular uh, um, you know, um, session. We look forward to the coming session. Amen. Like Pastor Susan said, Reverend Susan said, make sure when you're coming, you invite someone. Isn't it? We're going to have a wonderful time talking about the role of the fivefold towards the saints. I want to take this opportunity as we close um, to just say that in case you're here and you have all types of needs, different types of needs. You want to get saved. You are not born again. You want to get born again. And you want somebody to pray with you. Or you are born again and you would like to be spirit filled. Filled with the Holy Spirit. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Or maybe you are spirit filled but there is no evidence of speaking in tongues. If you are sick in your body. If you have a particular area that you want someone to stand and just pray with you. We are going to have several people here in front. Every one of them is actually trained to do what it is that they are going to be doing. And um, let me call upon those ones. Um, all those that are affiliate A, are members of the Joshua Generation Trust, let me call on you to come forward. This uh, particular people, let's do that very quickly. Um, these particular people are all graduates of the Joshua Generation School of Ministry. That is the Kingdom Academy. And they have been trained to, you know, get you filled with the Holy Ghost, um, uh, pray for your healing, um, get you born again. And whatever else that you want, don't worry, you'll be in very good hands. Amen. There is no way we will entrust them to do this very critical thing. As pastors ourselves, if we had not tested them. Are we together? And so we, we have tested them and they are well able to do this. And they are going to be assisted by another team of people. If you are here and you are affiliate B and you are serving at the Joshua Generation, affiliate B and you are serving at the Joshua Generation, let me request that you come forward. If you are here, affiliate B and you are serving at the Joshua Generation, um, 
Okay? So very quickly, we should be here by now. Amen. Hallelujah. Join any one of these people very quickly. Affiliate B and your, and your serving so that we can see the next time. Um, Affiliate B and your serving, let me request that you come very quickly. Okay? Are we good? All right. Kingdom Academy 2013. Kingdom Academy 2013, you're here and you're in Kingdom Academy 2013. That is our school of ministry. Kingdom Academy 2013. Very quickly, join anybody who doesn't have... Um, are we good? How many more people do we have? Just one more person. Okay, Kingdom Academy 2014. We just need two people. Kingdom Academy 2014. Two people. I'm seeing you, but you're seated. Amen. God bless you, you wonderful people. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Thank you very much. So please feel very confident to come in to end. Let's, let's um, let the group be distinctive. Two people, two people, two people. We have uh, one person leading and then the one who is assisting so that when the people come they it's clear to them um, governor you can just move a little bit that side okay wonderful excellent all right um god bless you please you can stand to your feet kindly as we go we want to pray thank you so much we cannot overemphasize how appreciative we are um we definitely enjoyed ourselves as panelists but we couldn't have had not come, isn't it? Because we cannot be speaking to empty chairs. And so we are so grateful that from where you're coming from, you stop whatever you are doing to come here. I think a good smile is, is a good thing to do. Amen? Some of you look so serious. It's a good thing to be serious. But the, joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen? Let's have a smile. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, I have been blessed and I have no excuses in the area of sonship or fatherhood. Tell them that. Come on. And give them a smile and tell them it was good sitting next to you. Amen. A smile will always brighten someone's day. Amen. Some of you I can still see you are struggling with a smile. Don't worry. God will bless you with a good smile. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't struggle too much. Just pray to him. And so please feel free. Come to these people and they will minister to you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you for this opportunity, Father, to gather like this as a body of Christ from different um, fellowships, communities, churches within this nation, and even perhaps outside of the land. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory, Lord. Thank you for the things that you've taught us this afternoon. We declare and we decree that as we go forth, we are doers of the same. Lord, we declare that we will not withstand, we will not hold back that which you've taught us. But as you have taught us, we go to do. We become epistles of sonship. We become epistles of fatherhood, Lord. We become partakers, Lord God, and, and imparting, even as we are partakers, imparting this teaching to others and being examples of them ourselves. As we gather like this, Lord, we thank you and appreciate you. As we look forward to next month, we thank you that you bring us again together to fellowship, to enjoy ourselves together as a body of Christ. As we go home, we declare, it is well with us. It is well with our families. It is well with our loved ones. It is well with everything that concerns us in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. Have a wonderful month. We look forward to seeing you next month. Amen. Give him one more shout of praise as we go. Hallelujah. God bless you. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, the Joshua Generation Trust invites you and your spouse to the annual Fivefold Ministers Roundtable and Retreat Conference. Holding from the 10th Wednesday to the 12th Friday of June 2015 at the Great Rift Valley Lodge and Golf Resort, Naivasha, Kenya. The theme is Building Our Father's Kingdom. We will engage in candid, brainstorming, and interactive sessions 
Contact Reverend Eric Kibuga on telephone number 0717 Email a minister's roundtable at jgmail.org. It will be a unique two nights and three days working holiday. Kariboni Sana.